podcast, which is a special one, I have with me a living legend of Manchester City, the youngest player ever to play for Manchester City, and that's still a record. And a man who's not only been a player, who's won trophies galore and had a fantastic career, but is still associated with the club, um, whose grandson is now in the youth team, and who was himself a coach of the youth setup and within Manchester City for many years. And that man is Glyn Pardo. And I suspect, Glyn, that you, and I think I know I'm going to, you're going to answer this, but um, do you consider yourself to be a living legend, as I certainly do? No, I mean, no, I mean it's only what people say. Isn't it? No, I mean, I've had a great, as you said, Ian, I've had a great career. I mean, a fantastic time at Manchester City. Still having a fantastic time at Manchester City. Um, with my grandson Tom now playing for the U team and looking good, it's a, a bonus at my time of life. Absolutely, but you, your career is a long one and I want to talk to you about lots of things that happened within your career. We'll perhaps come on to, to young Tommy a little bit later yeah, on. Yeah, no problem. But uh, as, a, as a kid, uh, what were your first memories? Uh, do you remember being a football fan from an early age and was City on your radar when you were a kid? No, not really. No, uh, I can remember Brevard right back to when I started playing football at school at uh, about 10 or 11 and played for the school team and then progressed each year like you know with the school team until I got to uh, mid Cheshire which was uh, is the middle of Cheshire and then I played for Cheshire which is old Cheshire and then I played for England schoolboys so I can remember it really well uh, yes I've, I've always been but my team was Wolverhampton in them days I used to love Wolves uh, Bert Williams was it and uh, I'm trying to think Billy Wright yeah. Ron Flowers Peter Broadbent they had some great players so that was my first uh, choice really uh, as a kid supporting a team and then as I got older I rather enjoyed City and then Everton come in for me and they were very very I wouldn't say I don't know what the word is they're very keen I used to go there sometimes when my mum and dad on a Saturday to watch games and uh, I was dead I must be honest was I was in two minds really because uh, they looked after me brilliant and then they changed manager and they didn't, I'm not going to say names <laughs> and I didn't fancy that manager and then City as you know were all you know they were all in for me and that so I thought well I'll go with you City with RL so in the end I changed Joe City. Well you, you mentioned RL a couple of times you're talking about Alan Oates who's yes, your cousin. Right, cousin so how much of an influence did he have then it was was he the reason he came to City? You know, no I wouldn't say he was the full reason but it wasn't help yeah it was a help yeah and uh, as i say city were really really keen as well so the, i mean there was a it, it was a friendly night club uh the, the scout uh, i can't think of his name now he's an old fella what was his it wasn't name? harry godwin back then no was it was before, before, that? before yeah. harry yes uh les mcdowell was the manager and george poison he was uh, very keen to george and he was a nice fellow and he treated us very well so we, in the end as i said he decided on city before we talk about City then, just let, give me an idea of what you were like as a kid and, and what oh, sort of person, like person you are really. Uh, as a kid I was never in. Uh, I was one of them kids that was always out, always playing football, uh, summer cricket. Uh, we'd even make hockey sticks and play hockey, you know, a couple of sticks to come together. Cricket bats, we, we never had nothing in them days to be honest with you. Cricket bat, we'd get a piece of wood and we'd get my dad or somebody to shave it into or cut it into the shape of a cricket bat or put anything up for stumps and play and and that was it we had nothing really we just we just loved being out there I mean I, I was as I said I was never in I'd go to school in the morning I'd run home from school change I mean got my dinner down put my shoes on and we all be out at the top of the street playing football and about 20 past one we'd all run down wash your hands, change your shoes and go back to school. And that's how it was. Four o'clock came in, quick biscuit or something on the park. There till six o'clock at night. Didn't, oh well, you had to come in for tea, you come in when you were ready. It was fantastic. I mean, we were never stopped. It was one of them and we used to build camps, you know, camps. We had some great camps on the fields because I live in the country. And in them days, it wasn't like it is now. It was brilliant. You could go on the fields. You could do, you know do anything. And uh, I, I mean, I had a great bringing up. Mum and Dad looked after me. 
they were tremendous when I mean, dad never said a word hardly my mum was the boss <laughs> my dad never said a word but uh, I mean he was great and if he'd watched me come in he'd go I could have wafted that with my cap what were you doing you know I mean he never really said a word to me but it, what an upbringing I wish kids I'm, I'm not being having to go at kids and parents to, uh, today but I wish they could have been brought up and do what I did when I was a kid because they'd really really enjoy it did you always have a tremendous will to win? Because to be a successful athlete, footballer, cricketer, whatever it is, there has to be something. So as a kid, did you always want to win and always oh, have that? Oh yeah, God, I bet nobody beat me anything. <laughs> but I was a good loser. You know, if I lost, I'd shake your hand and say, well done. I think which is a, a secret really of getting on. Oh yeah, I mean, I used to run for mid Cheshire, things like that, the schools and things like that. I broke all the records. What sort of distances were you I used in? to do the 100 to 200. Uh, at the school, they used to shot put. Uh, I can't jump. imagine your shot put. Yeah, shot put, long <laughs> jump, <laughs> relay. I used to do everything. You know, everything I used to do at school and, uh, as I say, I never got beat once. I mean, some of the tales really, I, I, we used to have great with the teachers, Mr. Evans. He was a teacher and, uh, and he was, you know, he used to take you and they used to take you. I mean, they don't do it today. After school, when the athletic season was coming, they used to take us up to the fields, the school field, take all this, you know, all the school and have a look, see what you could do if you wouldn't run in, if you wouldn't jump in, or we had a little girl, June Clark, or was it not June, I forget that, she could throw the jab in a mile, you know. But they used to take you there and stay with you for an hour, two hours after school and sort out and teach you. Mr. Stringer, he was fantastic. I mean, him, Mr. Stringer, Mr. Evans used to take me with England schoolboys, they'd go, and I'd go up to where we were playing, and they would come take me up there, stay in the hotel, then bring me back. I mean, they wouldn't do that today. No way would they do that today. And that's how it was. It was like a big family. I mean, I knew everybody at our school. I bet they wanted a kid, in the, you know, like from 11 to 15. But they wanted a kid in the school I didn't know. Because it was all, it was all a family and it was fantastic. I mean, if you got in trouble at school, you, you couldn't tell your mum and dad, well, you have to tell them. Because you'd walk in, I'd walk in like two weeks after, walk through the door and my mum would go boom! And I'd go, what's that for mum? She said, well you in tr uh, trouble at school a couple of weeks ago. I said, what do you mean? She said, oh Mrs Clark or Mrs Thingy's told me. That you, and that was, that's how it was. But it was great because everybody knew everybody. And you, if you got in trouble, you got punished for it. Because everybody had said, you know, they, they know who you were. And as I say, the teachers, I mean, they were fantastic. I mean, they couldn't do enough for you. I mean, we used to go in Mr. Evans' car and I used to put about eight in the car when we go and play, you know, at night matches <laughs> at the other school. You know, things like that. Never happened now, would it? No, no. That's, I don't know. It, it's a changed world. And people, kids don't seem to want to do that anymore, do they? I mean, I would love to go back to that when I was a kid. It was fantastic. Were you an only child? Or you I was an only child, Ian, yeah, but uh, I had our rallies older than me. But I did see a lot of them when I was young. And he had a younger brother, Terry. He's just a bit older than me, so I, I saw Terry quite a lot. Uh, Ken, he was a bit older and had a few more cousins, Andrew and all them and Tim. And, you know, so uh, my mum and dad had a big family. The era you grew up in, and you painted this picture now of a fantastic adventure in the countryside in Leafy Cheshire, um, is different than it is now, of course. Oh, but of when you came then into the, the world of football and you came into a big city like, like Manchester and you were only a kid, you know, you were 15 yeah. when you made your debut for City. Yeah. Um, did, was that a big culture shock for you to come from that world to this or was it not that No, different? not really, because when I'd finished, I always went home. You know, no matter how many years I was here, since I played football, I've done this, I always went back to home. So it wasn't a big culture shock really and uh, well when you go there, I mean you got him with Fred and there's a lot of John Clay was there, wasn't he, Mike Doyle and all the lads that you know they were there, they were great lads, we all mixed in and we had no problem, we, I mean we went into town to Lewis's for lunch sometimes and no it was great, I didn't want the culture shock, it was just just the way life was I'm afraid, I think. I assume that when you started you would have come across somebody like Bert Troutman at oh. the end of his legendary status. 
So you were a kid, he was a fully grown legend almost oh, by yes. then. How, how did he relate to you? How did you relate to him or other players like that? Brilliant. I mean, the older players were, I thought they were fine. I mean, they kept you in your place. You know, you couldn't do what you wanted, you know I mean? I play on. I played on a Wednesday night once, and on the Thursday morning, I'm knocking on the door to get in again in the first team dressing room. I mean, you you go for going, and you walk in, and someone you beat one of me sat in the corner, and you haven't seen me. There. Where are you going? I was just going. Have you? Did you knock? Oh, oh sorry. So he went back. You knock on the door. No answer. So he just walk. He just walk off and wait till they come. You know, if you did anything wrong, you put the kid in the bag. You just throw it out and tell you, you know. Thingy. I remember Bert, I mean Bert, I've always got him with Bert, he's been fantastic to be me Bert. Uh, I remember going in the boot room, I mean, the boot room you know, cleaning boots, we had, which we had to do. And uh, Jimmy Redders came in, was it? no, what Bert came in, didn't he? He said, Glenn, I said, are you Bert? He all right? He said, yeah, just let the shot for me, will you? But didn't get, I can't remember the sandwiches or whatever it was, I don't know. So I said, yeah, of course I can, Bert, you know, I'm not going to say no to Bert, am I? So I go off, run back. Come back, Jim Mendes is in the dress, in the boot room, really. Where have you been? I said, I've been getting dingy for birds. He said, well, Why didn't you tell him to off? I said, Am I willing to tell Bert from off? I said, He battered me, he battered me, you know, but he was great, Bert. I mean, ever since I played with him and all the years with the old players and things like that, uh, he had a dinner at the club when he was, uh, when he was, at, was it? Oh, this one wanted for something. He invited me and my family, me and my wife there. I've always had a great thing you were, Bert, and I think he's a, he was a great fella. Mm -hmm.